What's up, sons? It's Blydrod with Son of a Tech once again, and welcome to yet another Talking Head video. Today, we're going to be talking about why you shouldn't mine to services such as Coinbase or Crypto.com. And on the other hand, why maybe it's fine and in what circumstances you should do it. But of course, the question always is, why shouldn't I mine to Coinbase? And well... That's what we're here to answer. But first, make sure you check out the affiliate link for Flash Routers down in the description below. Flash Routers is an easy way to protect your entire home network behind a VPN. It has an easy to use GUI that you basically just log into your favorite VPN service like NordVPN with, and then off to the races you go. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So there you go, check out Flash Routers for the easiest way to get your entire home network behind a VPN. Okie doke, so question of the day, why shouldn't I mine to Coinbase? Well, this one's pretty interesting because the thing is, is in the past, Coinbase and services like Coinbase would advertise that you should not mine, of course, to your Coinbase wallet. And the reasoning behind this was actually a lot more simple than you would actually first think. And that is because they were worried that you would override their or overrun their servers with transactions and basically end up losing some crypto because their server side wouldn't be able to process all these transactions. Now you may ask, why would it have to process the transactions? Isn't that all recorded on the blockchain? And the answer to that is yes. And that is also the reason why you wouldn't want to mine the Coinbase. Because when you mine to something like Coinbase or Crypto.com, essentially what's happening is they've given you a public address, but that's not your actual address. As soon as you send that to Coinbase or to Crypto.com, that goes into their master wallet, essentially. And a master wallet is a wallet hosted on exchanges that holds all of the particular cryptocurrency. So whether that's Ethereum, Bitcoin, so on and so forth. What this does is really it facilitates a, a, it facilitates easier swapping of cryptocurrencies on their end so that they can also keep their fees lower. And this is really why they do it is not only so that they have complete and total control of your crypto, but also so that they can provide a third party rate for exchanging cryptos. Now, the alternatives to that are pretty new. They've just started coming out and they're things like Uniswap. But if you've ever done any trading or swapping on Uniswap, you know that the fees are super high. And part of the reason for this is because you have to pay the fees on the chain for those tokens or of course for the fees of ethereum coins right and whenever you're doing that you're driving the the fees up higher and higher because the demand is going higher so to get to the front of the line people are paying more in fees and ta-da problem your fees get really high so exchanges basically did this so that they have like a their own ecosystem of basically being able to trade cryptocurrencies at whatever fees they see fit. In the case of like Coinbase, it's around 20 to 30%, depending on how high of a level you are trading at. It can get even lower than that, down to like 10% or below, or even 1% I've seen. Sometimes Coinbase fluctuates a lot. And then in the case of crypto.com, this allows them to get those fees down to that 0.2% make or takers fees. And that's pretty much where you're at, right? That's the reason for them doing it that way. And it's also the reason why you don't want to mine to the wallet or potentially not mine to it. Because basically, if you're mining and you're getting paid out a lot, what's going to happen is you can possibly overload the transactions and overload their servers and basically shut them down, which is why in the past, Coinbase and Crypto.com would say, please don't mine to our wallet. Now, with the advancements of technology and server infrastructure, this has changed. Uh, to my knowledge now at this point, Coinbase doesn't say that you shouldn't. However, what you want to keep in mind is you don't control that crypto, right? So we talked about how they basically store it in a master wallet. While that is to reduce fees for swapping and trading and so on, it does also mean you don't control the keys which means at any time they could change that. Another thing that happens sometimes, and it happened a lot more in the early days of crypto, is that they would essentially change your wallet address. 
especially during like upgrades and so on and so forth. So let's say like Coinbase went down for a little bit and you were mining and you got a payout while you were mining. Well, when it came back up, the address was different and maybe they accidentally assigned your old address to somebody else and boom, you just paid somebody else out. So these were things that used to happen a lot that don't happen near as much now. And that is why you hear don't mine to Coinbase or don't mine to an exchange because well, A, you don't control the keys and B, your wallet address could change at any time. Now to give you a visual example of this, I have been mining to Crypto.com. So in Crypto.com here, what you're going to essentially see here is last night we had a payout of like 0.16 ether, right? And up here, what you'll see is that our balance is zero point whatever ether. Now the thing to keep in mind is our balance right now, I didn't pull anything out. It should be 0.16. But because of the way crypto.com functions, this just went into their wallet. It didn't go into my wallet. And this address, I don't have any control over. Only crypto.com has control over. So I wanted to mine to it basically to give you guys a visual representation of what exactly is happening here. And it's something that a lot of people seem to miss or not catch, right? Okay, so there's your visual example, right? At this point, you can see that the transaction goes out from the mining pool to crypto.com. Then crypto.com takes that and puts it into their wallet. And now all of my crypto, all of that Ethereum that I just mined and sent to crypto.com is not in a wallet that I control fully. It is an exchange and I have access to that Ethereum. Uh, but only as long as crypto.com is up. So if the app goes down or they crash or their servers go out of service or if they do something malicious like hack themselves like nice hack did back in the day, I lose all that crypto and there's no way that I'm going to get it back. So should you mine to crypto.com or Coinbase? Easy answer. The safe answer is no, but the answer is a little bit more complicated than that. And that's because in some situations, you'll find it a lot better to mine directly to one. And then you can get cheaper fees like we talked about and what to do with your Ethereum to swap to something like Bitcoin and then send that Bitcoin out to a hardware wallet or somewhere safer. And that is something to take into account. If you are going to mine to a Coinbase or a Crypto.com or an exchange at all, Here's my recommendation. Don't leave it there for too long. Don't leave a lot of it there. And when you're mining to it, make sure that you set your payment threshold to not send more than once per day. So once per 24 hours. If you are mining to a pool that's paying out hourly or something along those lines, you need to take into account that the exchange you are mining to might not be able to handle the transaction load and you definitely don't want to screw yourself over by taking down the exchange you're using. Like I said, not as big of a problem as it used to be, but it is still something to keep account of, right? So I hope this video cleared up why people say don't mind the Coinbase or don't mind to an exchange. And I hope it helps you make some better decisions when deciding on where to point your miners to as far as a wallet goes. And be sure to check out the links, affiliate links down in the description below, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah.